I deal with all the time. So it's, again, it's, it's not the place, because a lot of people are bent about, well, this school's bad, or what's the worst school in Oakville? You know what, that can change. You can have one, one uh, coked out drug dealer that moves in, and the school goes downhill, and then that kid moves on, and the whole place elevates, and it's a better place to be, so. Uh, this is all stuff that we've seized over, over uh, time in, out of Oakville high schools. If all this stuff went missing and I threw it all in the garbage, uh, within, for some of the stuff, um, I could go next week, replenish it all, and for other stuff, it'll take me about a month. But this is all stuff that, that I could refill uh, fairly quickly. So, it's all good. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to look at it, as I say. Do you mean the gun and the knife also? Yeah, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're great intimidators. Um, we had a, a kid last uh, slashed in White Oaks uh, smoking pit. Uh, an argument over a uh, over a so lots of kids carry knives most don't don't use a knife on a day-to-day -day basis uh, but a knife is great for for chopping your marijuana up if you don't happen to have a grinder which that is it's good for uh, for taking a an oxy pill blot it and crushing it up so you can snort it it's good for chopping your uh, it's good for all kinds of different things so do you have to go this far over the top no but a simple pocket knife will, will work well for it. Are those fake things? This is a fake gun, yeah. I mean, that's not a real gun like mine is, but yeah. But that's a, uh, I mean, it's a BB gun. But, but so not fake in that regard, but not like mine. But, uh, but yeah, those are all things we've seized. And this is only a portion of it. <clears throat> this is stuff that we've just collected for this purpose. There's lots of stuff that will, obviously, if we need it for court purposes, goes into the property lockers. Uh, the bong that I seized yesterday, along with some marijuana uh, and some other stuff, went into the property locker because that particular 15-year-old girl, I might need it for court. Uh, this stuff, we don't need for court, so we have no problems. This, <coughs> this amount of marijuana here, I uh, took off, uh, you guys can, you're more than welcome to have a look. Um, that came off an oxy attic uh, and a trade away there. She's an 18-year-old at one of my high schools. The trade away there was that I that uh, I got a few names off her for people that are that are pushing oxys. So I let her ride on the on the adult drug charge of, of uh, the marijuana, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get at the oxy supplier, um, which might flip. Fish. Right, exactly. I mean, on a harm reduction scale, would I? I mean, obviously, would I prefer the kids didn't use any drugs? Yeah, I'm a pretty simple guy. Let's go to Canada's Food Guide. It doesn't say anything about have you know, joints a day or whatever. It talks about fruits and vegetables and all that kind of stuff. However, I'm also a realist. If I have kids in my, in my smoking pit that are shooting oxys, and then I have other kids that are smoking marijuana, <clears throat> let me try to move all these kids at least to marijuana, right? That has a much lower addictive rate long term than the oxys. Do they shoot Yep. Like you eat one Yep, yeah. There was a great, I was telling these guys earlier before you got there, was a great 10, uh, no, no, it's, it's all good, young lady. It's all good. Um, there was a grade 10 kid at, at one of my high schools that uh, we caught in the pit shooting oxy. He's an addict. He was, uh, he was uh, the, the pusher there, the dealer there, um, was for to support his own drug habit, uh, wound up uh, giving him pills for free, you know, <laughs> and it goes from there. And then, uh, but that's not a good enough hook. So they were at a party one night and, and he injected this other kid. So would I love to get that guy somehow? Yeah. Although all the drug laws don't always let me do that. <laughs> that's ultimately when you talk about the bigger fish, yeah, I want that guy. Because that's not, there's not, there's at least two kids I know of that, he's in, that he is injected. So now he's, he's got a, a, a constant habit that he can get money off, right? So. Uh, drug trends are, are really no different than when I was in high school. The names change a little bit, but it's all the same uh, basic stuff. So generally speaking, you don't have anybody that's going to start injecting oxys or start injecting cocaine. Generally speaking, you're going to start with cigarettes and alcohol. Not all the time, and just because you start here doesn't mean you flow all the way down here. There are more people will do this, and it drops off as you go. However, nobody that I've seen so far starts down here you start at a different level. So when I was a kid in high school, I'm, uh, I'm 48, so I was born in 64. 
Uh, we had cigarettes and alcohol in, in my high school. Not everybody chose to do it, but we had that available. We had marijuana and hash. Uh, we had LSD, which we really don't see a whole lot of right now, but there is a little bit of it. Um, salvia we didn't have, <clears throat> but that's available. It's, it's not currently a controlled substance, so the kids can access it very easily. Uh, Jimson weed is another one they'll pull off. Kind of like the mag I'm from BC originally, the magic mushrooms idea that grew everywhere and people would pick them out of their backyard kind of thing. So that's kind of where salvia sits. E or M, which is ecstasy or MDMA, um, wasn't then, but that's like any other designer drug that kind of flows in and it flows out. I think Health Canada, the last time they actually tested an, uh, an ecstasy pill or an, an M, an MDMA pill, um, that was pure MDMA and wasn't cycled in with a whole bunch of other drugs, ketamine being one that they'll throw in, uh, was 2000 and, it's all good young lady, 2004. So if, if the kids go to buy an M, as an example, which uh, is commonly available in any high school, uh, they're not just taking MDMA. It's usually something else or everything else is in it but MDMA. Um, a lot of people want, want to know, well, what does it look like? The problem with that is that today it'll be a green pill with a dolphin on it, and tomorrow it'll be a blue pill with an elephant on it, and the next day it's a pink pill with a whatever on it. So does it look like candy? <clears throat> yeah, it will do. It'll just, generally speaking, look like a small little pill. But the, 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 the common thing I will say to the kids, or what I, I say to parents who might want to know, for instance, well, what does it look like? And I say anything you see your, anytime you see your kid with anything that you don't recognize, I would be suspicious. Um, anytime the kid see, is thinking, well, but I'm going to buy off this guy because the, the blue dinosaur pills are good and the pink elephant pills are bad, if you have no idea what's in it. It doesn't come with a, a website, a 1-800 number. Um, there's no, when you go to buy um, uh, penicillin from uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, say, they give you this big sheet of, of paper like, uh, take it only twice a day, make sure it's refrigerated, take it an hour before the meal, but, but no more than an hour afterwards, and only have it for 10 days, and there's this massive list of stuff. Well, the dealer doesn't give you that. <laughs> there's nothing. It's like, give me my 10 bucks, and I'll give you a gram of weed. There's nothing else behind it. So, and it's funny when you talk to the kids, and, and these guys in high school uh, can probably support this general idea, that... A kid, for instance, will go home and if they see, what's today, the 10th of November, if they see milk in their fridge that has a November the 9th expiry date on it, most kids will go, well, I'm not, I'm not drinking that. That's expired. Mm -hmm. Really? Like at midnight, it goes from totally fine to every single milk molecule sour? They won't do that, but they have no problem swallowing this pill or smoking that weed. They don't know what the THC content is. They don't know what's actually truly in the pill. There's no 1-800 number to go back to. There's no health risk form that's associated to it. There's nothing. And all that is also surrounded by a massive snitch culture. You do not snitch. You do not tell anything to anybody about anything. Um, really quick example of that was uh, the slashing that happened in the White Oak smoking pit last year. So I was actually there at the school. Coincidentally enough, I was walking across the parking lot uh, as it was happening. So I was watching it happen, but I, I was too far away to know what was happening at first. But it just, again, coincidentally, I was right there. So I knew a couple of the players in the pit. I figured out what happened. Um, and there's this one particular guy in the smoking pit who was a grade 12 kid last year who has a lot of power in that school. If you want to know anything about anything, go find this kid. He might not tell you, but he's going to know. So I said to another officer that was arriving, I said, go find this guy. He might not talk to you, but he will know exactly what happened. Uh, the other officer comes back a couple minutes later and said, yeah, he wouldn't tell me. So I said, no problem, I'll go talk to him later. So I go and I get the kid and I take him aside and I said, look, man, I just need to know what happened. Like, I need to know what started this and, and where's it going. And his line was, well, you know, sir, I, I can't tell you that. So the interesting thing to me was almost a year later working in a high school is that there is still a tremendous bridge to, to gap because of the uniform I wear. And had it gone slightly different, your buddy could be dead but I'm still not talking to you. So if you can't get a kid to talk about, and, and if any kid could, could overcome a bunch of other kids saying you're a snitch, it's this kid. Because this kid has that much power. He's that charismatic. He's that popular. And he's in grade 12. It was interesting. And very interesting for me. Um, prescription drugs is a huge issue because we are, North America is one of the, the biggest drugged up uh, 
continents in the world. We go through a massive amount of drugs. So go to your medicine cabinet, because your kids will, or their friends will if they're over, and they will, they will take stuff. Uh, cocaine or coke is absolutely commonly available. That's, that's not a hard thing to get if you want. And then the opiates, oxy. Uh, oxy, although it's getting, oxycontin, although it's, it's getting harder to, hello, sir, uh, getting harder to, um, to get. Um, but oxyneo, if you, if you, uh, you Google that, or there's YouTube videos about how to break that down. So it's, it's not a big deal. Any, any of that stuff's available without a, without a problem. Uh, these things will obviously happen at school. A lot of the kids, they, they, they come in as, as grade 8 kids um, and the world's their oyster because they were the, the, like the kings and the queens kind of thing like last year. Well, they're back in kindergarten again um, and stuff will go missing. Again, the place isn't bad, but some of the people aren't always there for the best reasons. Um, and the problem with locking it up too is they all want to share their combos with everybody else. Also, if you Google how to... Uh, there is ways that, that uh, kids have advertised how to get into a locker. So you can, you can cut up a pop can, fold it over a couple times, <laughs> make a nice shim, and you're into a locker anyway. So <laughs> the internet is a wonderful thing. Um, they will steal all this stuff, no question. You can get pretty good money for it. I mean, it's easy to rip off a MacBook for 1500 bucks, sell it in, in Oakville anyway. I'm sure Burlington has the same kind of place. You can get three to $500 for it in the blink of an eye. I mean, that's a lot of drugs you can buy. Support your, your habit or go have a good time with. Uh, my GPS example for Oakville Place is just that, that their parents or you guys in general wouldn't go to the Burlington Mall or Oakville Place with a brand new GPS on your dash and, and leave your car unlocked and expect the GPS to be there when you get back. So again, I'm not saying Oakville Place is a bad place, but not everybody that goes there goes for a great purpose. The schools I work in, this school for that matter, I'm not saying it's a bad place either. It's a great place. But not everybody that comes to the door has the best of intentions and just wants to get an education. And prevention is way easier than us to recover it. Uh, that's always going to be that way. Uh, we can find it maybe. Those are two uh, easy spots in Oakville to go to. These guys will buy almost anything as long as you produce an ID that says you're 18. Then they can... Uh, they can uh, They'll take a photocopy of it and buy it from you, and, unless we can get them. The, they're good to work with, but, they, but you have to go to them. They won't necessarily come to you. Come on in. No, it's all good. No, no, hey, it's all good. Yeah. Techville is, a, is a, um, a store in Oakville. It's in a Spears and, uh, absolutely, Spears and uh, Kerr area. And uh, they will, they will uh, buy uh, used uh, laptops, smartphones, whatever. Um, they will also uh, sell new stuff. They will also fix your computer for you. But it's an easy spot to go if you've ripped off a phone. So I've got the Blackberry that's been ripped off, and they can, they'll buy it from you for there. Right? Oakville Tech's another place. They're, they're a little bit better than these guys. Uh, but you can, you can offload stuff there, too. Kijiji's very popular. Um, really hard to get stuff back off Kijiji because now I have to go to the person and say, can I see the phone for the serial number? Unlikely they're going to stick around long enough for that conversation. If you go to one of these places, though, the risk they have if they don't work with us and there is an item that's been stolen, now you can charge them because technically you're in possession of this article that was obtained by crime. And you have to prove you didn't know. I don't have to prove how you knew. Right, so it's a little bit of a reverse onus. It's easier to work with those guys. Um, kids will buy the buy the phone. Kids have this belief that that if it's there and no one's right around it, it's it's claimable property. Nobody owns it, which isn't true, but that's what their belief is. So if, if a kid comes and picks up that phone, rips out the SIM card and sells it, then number one, the kid doesn't think there's a problem with it, and his buddy won't. It's, it's all it's all easy. It's it's no issue to them anyway. Um, yeah, that'll work if someone turns it on, uh, because not everybody will turn it on, but the laws also don't allow us to just go into someone's house because the GPS says it's there. I mean, it's a, st a, a starting point you can work with, but there's still things we have to, we have to deal with. I touched on that, because just a week ago on the radio station, this young lady, I think it's her laptop or something, is mm -hmm. stolen. Yep. Somebody like four doors down, oh, yeah. based on the GPS, yep. she knows it's in the house. But the police can't do anything about it. Mm. Yeah, that's, it's, 
you could you can start to work through a warrant with it, but it's not. It should be an easy process. Like even when I started 20 years ago, it was way easier to just go, "Hello, I'm coming in," uh, because I think this. Yeah, it's a lot different even now in 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 the 20 years that I've done it. But it's a great point about how yes, there's some benefits to it, but not always. The other one just on that is a lot of parents want to GPS their phone because they know where the kid is. That's not true. You know where the phone is, <laughs> but you don't know where the kid is. So there's a slight, slight difference there. Uh, all that stuff will happen in, in high schools. Uh, yesterday on Random Act of Kindness Day, I started at one particular school because of a robbery. So I'm thinking, man, if there's any day that we shouldn't have had a robbery, it's Random Act of Kindness Day. But nonetheless, he had his backpack ripped off. Um, and then I went from there to the, the drug arrest that I made. So those things will be there. Um, the, my idea there is that I, I think in some ways kids are, are too, too quick to go to, well, I have a right to do this and I have a right to do that. And I'm not saying you don't. You have a right to cross the intersection when the little white walking dude's there and you got the green light. And that's all fine. I accept that. But if you get the drunk guy that's driving the cement truck, and he's driving at you, you can stand in the crosswalk if you want and say, I have a right to be here. When you're dead, I don't know that it matters. Although you did have a right to be there, that's true. So my idea there, the, when I say the reed versus the oak, it says, like, yeah, you can maintain your principles, but can't you just bend a bit in the wind? Do you have to say, well, I have a right to walk through the forest as a grade nine kid with my brand new iPhone that's already been ripped off twice in the last month? because I've been robbed twice, but I have a right to be here. Walk around, man. Well, no, I have a, it's shorter and I have a right to be. So I don't know, it's like, I think to some degree you have to look after yourself too. Give, your, give me your lunch money or that's a nice phone, can I borrow it? And if a grade 12 kid comes up to a grade nine kid, then the grade nine kid's gonna say, yeah, you borrow my phone. <laughs> grade 12 kid's huge <laughs> compared to grade nine kid and you don't wanna mess with the, so, the social kind of circle and etiquette, right? Uh, and yeah, I agree, you know what I'd love, my, my goal ultimately to, would be to work my way out of a job in, in the high schools, so, yes? So that scenario, so it happened one, but what happens when it keeps recurring? Which scenario, um, sir? About the grade, nine, the grade 12 kid or whatever, you know, coming back to the grade 9 kid. Right. Yeah. So if, if we have video, then that's great. The forest isn't going to have video though, and not every area of the school has video. The benefit the video is, that you can remove the kid, the victim, from being the snitch. Because if you just have the kid, the odds are they will not say anything. Right. Uh, I went to a high school dance on the 25th of October, so it was a Halloween dance. We had, uh, in and amongst four fights that I know of that occurred that night, three involving guys, two invo or one involving a couple of girls, two guys that got sucker punched, they, they both know who the suspect is, I know who the suspect is, but the kids won't take, the victims won't take the next step, which is to formalize the complaint. So if the one kid who got six stitches and the other kid who got the black guy and spent the night in the hospital, if they don't want to sign off to me and say, yes, go ahead and investigate it, these two grade 10 kids, then I, it's a real challenge going after the grade 11 kid that assaulted one or the grade 12 kid that assaulted the other. If I don't have a victim, it's very hard for me to move forward. I would say as a kid, it's more the peer pressure. As an adult, you may lose confidence in the justice system. But for a kid, I mean, listen to music that talks about no snitching. Uh, you know, you snitch, you're a bitch, you wind up in a ditch. <laughs> kind of commentary from the kids. Like that is, it, if you want to look at the fact that, that the kids today have strong, strong ethical standards in some areas, absolutely, as a group of kids, they will not snitch. They will stick together, they will be ethical. Now, I'm not so sure that that's a great ethical stand. Mm -hmm. Having said that, that's a commitment they make. Now, when you get to an adult and you have a domestic violence victim, let's <coughs> say as an example, who finally decides that they're willing to step forward and, and then she, we, we investigate it and maybe we charge him, 
yeah, I can see her if, if we don't monitor him well enough or the judge doesn't do what the judge has to do because it's just a piece of paper. That guy gets let out and he goes and beats her up again. She is going to lose confidence in the justice system. And I support her in that. There's no question. Um, but it not, I see that more in an adult thing. Now, I mean, I may be wrong. I'll, I'm always willing to change my mind. But that's what I see, my observation from the kids, is more so that. So how can we encourage that, those victims to, to say if you did it? Like, what can we do, like the school or the parents, to encourage them to... I, you know what, if I knew all the answers, I'd write a book and I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> I, you'd so be paying sad. me a lot more money to do this kind of idea, right? It's so sad. But part of the issue is, for instance, that, that all of us adults in the room will never, ever, ever walk the hallways of a school the same way those two guys have to. They, they have peer pressure issues and that, that I, will never, I will never know. Right? There are, there, in fact, there are, there are female teachers in some high schools that will get intimidated by, by some groups of, of kids. Um, so how do we change that culture? Well, let's go all the way back to the very first episode of Survivor, which was a very popular show that actually paid a million dollars to the person who could be the most subversive, the most abusive, the most bully, or the highest degree of bullying, and we're going to pay you for that. And now we have shows like, although I guess it's in this last season, Jersey Shore, which is, I've seen a few times, it's an interesting thing to watch, but really, let's get drunk and party and scrap. But that's what we're pumping out as, 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 a, as a country and, and we're allowing to be in the media. So at the same time we have all these messages, then we have the fallout, if you will, which is the kids in the high school. So how do you change that culture? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how you, how you counteract all this stuff out here. The music industry, which is massive and huge. But there are some kids, probably arguably, arguably these two guys, that never have to worry about that. Now when they entered in grade nine, I'm sure they were a little bit kind of idea, right? But now they're in grade 12. In order for them to, to, to be willing to be here in the weekend tells me that they must make more good choices than poor choices because there are a lot of kids I know that I deal with that would, there's no way they'd be here. Absolutely no way, they're not, they're not dealing with this. So my belief system would be that on average, 51% decision kind of thing, they're making more good choices than poor. But again, back to your original question, how do, you, how do I truly work my, myself out of a job? I don't know. I think the more involvement parents have in their children's life is the start of it. So a lot of times when I talk to kids, um, or like the, the girl that I, 15 year old girl that I arrested yesterday for the drug possession, both her parents were sitting in front of me by 4 p.m. that day. There is a lot of parents that, that will, will tell me, well, no, I'm too busy today, but I can see you next week. <laughs> this is your kid. <laughs> but if you don't find it important enough in your day, that's okay with me. I'll, like, I'll talk to you next week. That's fine. I still want to talk to you. But I see that as a problem, that, that you don't want to be involved. Or you get into, and there's all kinds of reasons that, that uh, families will split. But, but the kids whose mom and dad split, for whatever reason, that puts a, an extra strain on their life. Now, some kids can get over that. They're resilient enough because, they, for whatever reason, their personal makeup or their parenting up to that point, there's other kids that falter. So how do we take everybody and move them forward? I don't know. I really don't know. But I can't, again, I can tell you some, some stuff that, that does go to working is involved parents. Um, if both are there, great. If one's only there because of other circumstances that happen in their life, I just found out today, for instance, that um, a lady I used to work with, uh, her husband passed away suddenly. Well, I mean, it's obviously tragic for that family circumstance, but they'll have to soldier on and move forward. Um, but is she, you know, after she, is she still willing to be able, or able to get over her grief in time and still be there for her kids? If she is, then her kids are still going to benefit. But the, when, when parents withdraw, we have, a, we have a problem. The other side of that coin is when parents want to float in and be lawyers, there's a problem. Um, if you are going to mitigate responsibility your kid had to the point where they're not accountable, there's an issue. I'm not saying kids should get strung up and 
sent out onto the plank. But I've also, I had a parent at another one of my schools that watched video of her kid stealing a backpack and said, that's not, her, that's not my kid. <laughs> really? If anybody should recognize their own kid on video, it's you. I know that's your kid, but you're refusing to admit to it. Anyway, it's interesting, so. A uh, couple bull bullying myths. Uh, most now happens online. A lot does, but not all of it. And we, and we can go back and talk to these things uh, again. There is an immense amount of pressure that happens in school. Uh, there is, uh, back to one of my schools I'm thinking of, uh, if you walk in the front doors and go one way, you'll go down the drug hallway. If you walk the other way, you'll go down the intimidation hallway. So there are kids that will deliver, and teachers, by the way, that will deliberately walk around the intimidators going a different route in the hallway. They don't care about the drug hallway because the druggies just want to get high, right? They don't really care about what anybody else, but they will deliberately not walk back by certain hallways. Um, bullies are bullies and victims are victims. There was a... Uh, sorry. <laughs> How about a non-Catholic school? We'll go to that point anyway. I'll, I'll give you that that uh, grade at least. Sorry. Uh, they well, they will deal in the hallway. Uh, they will chop or, or or like divide marijuana in the hallway. Um, they generally won't smoke though because of the odor, right? So it's pretty easy for me to, to, you know, have a pipe on me and put it in my pocket if the principal is going to walk by. It's pretty hard to disguise that odor, right? So they'll generally go outside. Now, there was a, another kid earlier this week that was, that was drinking a beer in a classroom. Um, so there's, there's uh, teachers over there, and there's a couple kids, and he's hiding behind a kid, and he goes, <laughs> also, just so you know, a non-Catholic school. <laughs> just so you know for your benefits there. <laughs> um, so it's in a, yeah, I mean it's... Whatever they can get away with. Yeah, absolutely it is. Absolutely it is, yeah. Again, if you think of the liquor end of it, there's no smell associated to that, or certainly much less depending on the, on the type of liquor that you have as opposed to burning marijuana, which is why a lot of kids will, will also pop pills. Because if we deal in the hallway and, we, and, and I sell you a pill and then you swallow the pill, there is absolutely no order that goes with no. that. No, absolutely not. So do a lot of kids do pills as opposed to marijuana nowadays? Uh, some will, to that but some that like the high, well, some like the high off, off marijuana and they, they hang around with their marijuana smoking friends and some want to flip the high to a pill or they want to experiment with it. Some don't like the high from, from a pill, so they go back to marijuana. It's all about the high you like, which is really no different if you think about it than some people love French food and some people love Italian food. I don't know. Like, if I'm hungry, I'll go either, but, but some people will deliberately go to one cuisine or another, while some people will deliberately make one choice or another choice. But we do have kids that are, are 16 and, and addicted to something. And I'm not talking addicted to, like, we're talking addicted to hardcore stuff. Like, they will, they will snort coke every day. And they're, they're gone. Their minds are blown. They're never to be recovered. You, you can't go backwards and, and build more brain cells at that point. It's not going to work. It's so like, like a 16-year-old oxy addict. Like that, that kid's never not going to be an addict. At least from all the medical science I've read, you, it's like being an alcoholic. You are always recovering. You can always slip backwards. And it's the same for this guy. Right? Um, the kids that you think are, are the, the most likely not to bully will be the first ones to bully if there's a new target. So if you guys all are picking on me um, for whatever reason and there's a new kid that comes into the class and I perceive him as weaker or her as weaker, I will automatically flip to picking on them. I've seen it happen a number of times. Um, so because that gives me two things actually. I can offload the victim onto them plus I can join a popular group. Everyone wants a friend. Right? Uh, that's not true. <laughs> Absolutely not true. Otherwise, we wouldn't have stuff like Bill 168. We wouldn't have criminal harassment charges. Um, I'm, I'm not going to agree with that one because uh, we would have way more suicides then, and we don't. Now, we can go back to the Amanda Todd idea. Uh, tragic set of circumstances, no question. However, I'm going to say that that's just not bullying. There was other stuff going on. Because I have a ton of kids that are bullied every, every year. Most of them 
somehow manage to get through it, cope, whatever. Again, I'm not suggesting that the Amanda Todd case wasn't, wasn't a horrible case, but I don't see that as, as being realistic. Uh, that I'm not so sure about. Um, I, you know what, great spot to go to. I, let's keep walking down that path, sure. And will we ever get there? I don't know. Hello, sir. This is my uh, cohort I used to actually have the privilege of working with, uh, with Drew as we split up Oakville and, uh, and talked to all the kids. Uh, social media uh, is, is a big issue for sure. Um, they, they always want to be on it. We, we follow kids on Facebook and Twitter, BBM. I'm connected to a, a ton of kids. Most of the stuff that they tweet about as an example is absolute nonsense. It's no different than if all of us went out to, for a, a plate of chicken wings and a, and a beer tonight and we were there for an hour. We might solve world hunger for 10 minutes. The rest of the other 50 minutes is just nonsense, BS. The benefit of us going into the restaurant is the restaurant walls don't live in infamy. It's unlikely anyone recorded us or screenshotted us or screen grabbed us. The stuff that you tweet about though, because <laughs> most kids are unprotected, does have a potential life in, in infamy. Um, and they are all connected. They will, they will absolutely respond. I've tweeted some stuff um, that within under a minute, a kid that wasn't even connected to me has sent me a message back on BBM as an example. So they are very, very quick to always be updated with the 50 minutes of nonsense that most, most stuff about Twitter will be there. Uh, especially for a kid, they will betray your other, your friend will betray your confidence. Uh, you yourself will undoubtedly become involved in misusing the technology. Um, my grandmother test there, just so you know, is uh, I'm sitting in a church pew and I have grandmother one on one side and grandmother one, two on the other side. And whatever I'm about to pump out in the social media, I look at both of them and they say, yes, dear, that's a very lovely thing to send or a very lovely thing to tweet highly unlikely most of us in the room can pass the grandmother test. I'm not saying I'm innocent. Let's be clear on that. But I think as adults, we're generally speaking, generally speaking, better able to pause before we send. You know, you think about the fact you can't drive till you're 18, you can't, or 16, you can't drive, or vote till you're 18, you can't legally drink alcohol till you're 19, you can't, 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 oh, here you go but kids will get handed off uh, the Blackberry, the iPhone, or the web-connected laptop, and then they're in a the room and they can connect anybody they want. And it is empowering. All you've done is you've taken the, it used to be when I was in high school, it's the, the biggest kid or the most charismatic kid could be the bully, whether you're a female or male, doesn't matter. Now the, hello, now the, uh, the little person, who, but who's very good with their fingers on a key, keyboard can maintain that much power. And some would argue it's, it's even more empowering. Um, that thing's massive, the last one, because kids will, will automatically want to fire back. And, and a lot of adults will, will do as well. Like, think about the next time someone's behind you flashing their lights, honking their horn, and doing this. How fast do we all go, <laughs> right? Easy to get there. Really easy to get there. The funniest thing for me is, uh, I'm the same guy, and I, I just pulled into the, the lot of the back of work driving a, a cruiser, and then I flip into my own car, and all of a sudden, everybody around me is different. But I laugh at that, because I'm the same guy, but I'm wearing different clothes and driving a different car. Because everybody Our wants to. Exactly. Everybody wants to adjust to a great degree. Uh, common social media, and, and this will change for sure. Um, I don't see a lot of form spring anymore, but it used to be really big off Facebook. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with social media. There's nothing wrong with a car until a drunk gets behind the wheel. Uh, social media can have great benefits. I'm just not so sure it's always used the best way. Um, but that's just me. Uh, sex, sexting is a, a, a problem, more so in the girl, with the girls. We'll talk about that, though. Uh, we, ha, ha, we had a, uh, actually, unfortunately, I have to tell you this. This was a Catholic school, this particular example. Uh, uh, but one of the odd ones, so, uh, you know. Uh, anyway, this particular girl uh, made uh, a video of herself uh, in her own room with her webcam. Uh, be, she was uh, basically lured into doing it, but she still uh, decided to do it. Um, it was about 40 minutes long, or almost 40 minutes long, uh, portions of it w which were absolutely, uh, absolutely pornographic. 
um, she was inserting various things in various orifices. It went on to a particular website. Um, the high school officer at that school goes to the school sometime subsequent to that video being made. And he sees all these guys in, the, in, the, in one of the pits that he never usually sees. He's like, what's going on here? Like, something's different. These guys shouldn't normally be there, and a whole bunch of them are looking at, at the video on, uh, on various smartphones. So um, that's not a common thing. What is very common, though, is um, people taking photos. And uh, that one is just everything seems like a good idea at the time, or why would you do it, right? I get that. Uh, but a common one of girls will snap a picture of themselves and, and send it off to their, their boyfriend at the time kind of idea. Uh, the guys do do it, but it's mainly the ladies. And I, not being female, I'm only guessing at this point. But, but uh, you know, if I don't, she will, and he's, and he's so hot, and I love him forever, and he's promised that he'll, he, won't, uh, he won't forward it on, you know, because we're in love or I'm in love, that kind of idea. Guys will forward it. There's no question. It is not going to be maintained. <laughs> only on their smartphone or only on their computer. It's not going to happen. There was a grade 12 girl. This was the non-Catholic side again. We'll go back to them. <laughs> Just letting you know. Um, a grade 12, 12 girl last year, she, had a, she agreed to apparently to a topless photo of herself in grade 8. Uh, in grade 8, yeah. And uh, the photo was sent on and then uh, was it kind of disappeared, if you will. So grade 12, she's in a, in a relationship with her current boyfriend. The photo resurfaces these four years later. Caused an immense amount of problem in this current relationship because, of course, her boyfriend at times going, what? Tell me about this, what's going on kind of idea. So it's more an example for me that once that photo gets pumped out there, yeah, good luck maintaining it. Um, most of the kids, oddly enough, actually do know what a Polaroid camera is. And my example to them is that there, I don't see people snapping a photo of themselves with a Polaroid camera. So the piece of paper comes out, slowly develops in like a minute, minute and a half. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's a good photo of me. And walk it over and hand it to somebody. I don't see that happening. Because there's too many steps where you can pause and go, this is not a good idea. I can jump on my BlackBerry, and in under a minute, I can upload anything I want. And then before I go, well, I don't know if that was a good idea, it's already gone. So, uh, below the surface, we talked a little bit about this before. Um, if you want to look at mental health, I think it's, it's the onset of your late teenage years that most people who are going to be schizophrenic become schizophrenic or start down that path. That's not grade nine kids, but that's somewhere in high school. Uh, lack of self-esteem. You can have a, a kid that enters grade nine as a popular kid in grade eight, but for whatever reason, they just cannot connect in grade nine. For whatever reason, it's just not working for him. That's a kid I'm going to have to worry about because the, the lowest common denominator is always a smoking pit. You don't have to be the jock. You don't have to be good on a computer. You don't have to play a musical instrument. You don't have to do well in chemistry, but everybody can find a friend in the smoking pit because there is no, no price of admission. Other than the longer you hang out there, you're going to start doing stuff that's really not great. So this is where I say, but if I have a grade nine kid that enters a smoking pit, end of semester one, they're smoking cigarettes, end of, end of semester two or the end of grade nine, they're smoking dope, for sure. I've never, ever seen anybody wheel a piano out to the smoking pit to serenade anybody. <laughs> Nobody pulls out a chemistry book and starts ripping off chem formulas. People skip and smoke up. That's what they do. So if you're going to spend time there, just be careful what you do. Strength of family is massive. Uh, the friends they had connected and if connectedness, resiliency. I can have and people in general that can be buffeted by all kinds of winds and still rise up and move forward. And there's other people that get knocked over once and don't get back up. How do we change that? Back to your idea before. <laughs> I don't know. But I can tell you that the more of these things you have, or maybe the, the, to some degree the, the less positives you have, the harder it's going to be. Um, kids or people in general will massage the truth. I don't, I don't know if anyone's ever told me on a ride check that they've had more than two alcoholic drinks. Generally, how many have you been drinking that? Yeah. How many have you had? Two. <laughs> There's no way you only had two. Well, if you say no, none. Well, but then that's believable too, oh, right? Okay, sure. That's, what I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'm a little suspicious, but, but. But at least it's an answer I don't always hear, right? Oh, yeah. and, and you could be very responsible. You probably are. You could be a non-drinker, right? 
We've also had different, different laws lately uh, which have reduced the amount you can drink before you get, uh, have your license suspended, right? Um, so a healthy do dose of par parental response, parental doubt is, is responsible, I think. Too many parents want to go and go, wow, well, whatever you want's okay, kind of idea. And this idea that parents want to be friends and not parents is, is wrong. I, I challenge you, because this hasn't happened yet with my three kids. I, mean, I don't know, maybe it's happened to you guys. But my kids, especially my guys, because they're 19 and 18, so they, they've had uh, girlfriends before, they'll ask me for the car keys. They'll ask me for money for the movie. They'll say, hey, can you flip me 20 bucks for the gas tank? Never once have they said, hey, you know what? Uh, my girlfriend and I are going to the movies. You and mom want to come along? Well, if they don't want to be my friend, why am I bending over backwards to be theirs? But a lot of parents, I think, they make, make that responsibility. Uh, the surviving physically, emotionally, and legally, uh, that, my idea there is your, your kids got to get through high school without having a, a criminal record. Hopefully they can walk down the halls without, without getting beat up, but that takes a level of confidence. And emotional strength is huge. If they, can, if they have emotional strength, they're probably going to make it through everything else anyway, right? Um, the the drop-off in supervision between grade 8 and 9, and it's only, the kids only age 2 months, is massive. Massive. What I see in grade 9 is a real separation in, in where people are going to go in life. In grade 8, everyone's kid's still going to be an astronaut and a doctor. In grade 9, dreams fade and hopes die. By the end of grade 12, you, you know, at no more than into grade 12. You've got kids that aren't even making it through grade 12. How do you help to keep that level of sort of hope? <laughs> what, like, what as a parent or as a police officer or <laughs> working yeah, together? And, and as a school, as, as a community, how do we foster and promote those, those uh, dreams and hopes? I, I think, again, involved parents are, are, are key. Uh, I think that expectations that are reasonable and consistent are key. Um, remember your role as the parent. You are the parent, not the friend. Um, and you will always be told, yeah, well, my friend over here uh, gets to do this. My wife's a, a, a principal in, a, in an elementary system. Obviously, you know what I do. And as it's, I've said to all three of my kids, I mean, I'm a bit tongue-in-cheek, but I said, hey, listen, you guys could have been born into any house you wanted to be. You guys decided to live here. It's your problem now. You're going to have to deal with it. And my other line would always be, just because someone else does it or just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, with all three of my kids, maybe not so many anymore with the guys, but at one point in time, sure. Could I have picked them up and thrown them out the front door? Sure I could. I was physically strong enough to do that. Does it mean I should? No. Just because your parents or your friends of your, your parents, <laughs> the parents of your friend let you drink in the basement, that's their problem. That's not what's going to happen here. Now, is it easy? No, <laughs> absolutely not. And here's the other sad fact. If you think about all of us adults in the room, we're all going to die one day. Hopefully a long time down the road, but we're all going to pass on one day. Every single kid in a high school, elementary school is going to take over every single job we have. So I don't know what you guys do. It doesn't matter to me. Somebody's going to be the next you. Someone's going to be the next you. Someone's going to be the next cop. Someone's going to be the next doctor, the next lawyer, the next astronaut. Somebody's going to be the next strung out druggie. We all hope it's not our kids. But all those roles have to be fulfilled. So everything you can do to foster hope and keep that dream alive is a good thing. But you know, with, the, with my kids too, I was never saying you had to get straight A's. Just do the best you can do. So if you're getting a C and I always see you in front of the Xbox, then you're not doing the best you can do. If I see you for, for a couple hours a night struggling through your math and you're only getting a C, then I'll give you credit for having the integrity and the stamina and the discipline and the courage to keep at it. But I think those qualities are what we need to foster. But then we're buffeted by things like Jersey Shore. So how do you <coughs> monitor that message, right? So those are all great questions. When we all come up with the answer, we will all write the book. <laughs> no problem. Um, and this idea of getting a graduated license is a much longer process. There's all these stages. You don't even really truly become a fully licensed driver anymore until you're 21 because you're still impacted by, by not, allowed, being, not being allowed to have any alcohol in your system, right? So that's a long process. Uh, the 40 developmental assets, I don't know if you guys have heard of them. I'm going a little bit because it's 11.18. I think we're supposed to be done to 11.25. Um, uh, the regional Halton's big on this. The, as, a, as a police uh, service, we've picked up on it a little bit. 
more importantly to me, though, it, it just speaks to kids being successful. Uh, and as parents, if you can nurture that, I think your kids will go, a, will go a long way. So the external idea is stuff, for instance, that's external to me. So what can a parent su support? You can give them boundaries and expectations, uh, constructive use of time, that kind of thing. Internal is, is stuff that the, the kid themselves has to do. But, but let's face it, by the time the kid's in school, if you've consistently done all this for the first four or five years, I think you're an awful lot better off for, to having these. Um, the, the, the basic study will say that the, the more uh, developmental assets that a kid has, the greater chance of success that that kid has. So as a really crazy example, if of the 40 developmental assets, and there's subgroups to all of these, somebody only has 10, then they're at a much greater risk of falling through the cracks and, and failing in life in general, compared to the person that has 30. You know, so you take away a, a supportive a, a parent group or, or parents or neighbors as an example and, and where there's no boundaries and expectations, you're going to have a kid that's further at risk. Right? I mean, there, there's lots of kids that I know that, that the expectation is you're home at 10. There's <laughs> lots of kids that I, I know there is no expectation for you to be home. Yeah, well, I have a problem believing that as a, as a kid in high school, you don't have to be home at all. That's just me, though. Uh, I think everybody needs this stuff. <clears throat> kids need it a lot too, and I say kids because we're because as generally as adults, you're 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 more settled, right? I'm comfortable in knowing that really, truly. Although, yeah, I do care about about a lot of people, but really, truly, I I also need to be comfortable with me, because there's a lot of people that don't like me from the second they see me just because the the uniform I wear. But I mean, I, my kids all love me. My wife loves me, I hope. <laughs> but you, yeah, most of the time. But you know what I mean? Like you have to look at who truly matters. There are, again, there are kids in the, in the high schools that will not talk to me and others that do. But at the end of the day, can I go do my job? Can I look in the mirror? Can I be happy with what I see? Can I support my family? Can I, can I work with or ultimately go home to who truly matters to me? Absolutely. That's where I say, as an adult, I'm comfortable with people not liking me. As a kid, Ooh, good luck with people not liking you. <laughs> That's really, really hard, I think, for a kid not to, to be at that place, right? So um, I recognize it's difficult for them. So again, you go back to everything we can do to support that and move them forward is, is a great place to be. If you guys, I'm more than happy to send this to anybody who wants it, by the way, too. We'll go backwards over it. Um, power to the parents. Because uh, a lot of parents want to want to be the friend, not the parent, right? Uh, every, everybody wants privacy. Well, you can't go on my internet because it's all private or my Facebook. Yeah, whatever. I'm, they're going to call it creeping. Whatever. I'm going to go anyway. What, might they come up with a new Facebook account? That's fine. That's fine. But remember, I pay for the internet. Uh, years ago, when my boys were, were uh, being foolish on it, I un unplugged the, uh, the modem from Rogers. And I made sure that I woke them up before I left for work, and I, I showed them. I said, I'm going to work now, and I'm taking this. What's that? It's the internet. What? Well, I have the internet at work. Your mother has it at work. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you can get it back when you're behaving yourself. Um, I, I pay for the hydro bill, or I mean, quite correctly, between my wife and I, we do. But it's our money that she works for and I work for. It's my phone. You can't take it. No. You're not 18. You can't go to Bell or Telus or Rogers or Kudo and get a phone until you're 18. And if you use fake ID, that's personation. It's criminal code offense. Uh, this came from a, a one coach that, that my, my one son's on a soccer scholarship. And that, that line, not the man, came from one coach. Because all these kids come to him and they think they're all big and bad. It's like, well, who paid for the gas to drive you to soccer for all those years? Who actually took the time to drive you to soccer all those years? Not you. You don't earn a paycheck. You're not the man. Go out and experience life first, and then you can say that you're the man. The last one is if you're lucky enough to be born, then you know what? Life doesn't owe you everything. If you're lucky enough to be here, then go create something. But, uh, if you don't know what something means, there's lots of ways to find out. Uh, Urban Dictionary is great. <laughs> Uh, you guys all have it on your smartphone. You can get the app if you want. Uh, but 
find out for sure because they will try to flip that. And then, what's that mean? We're not telling you. Well, okay, I'll find out. Whatever. <laughs> Be creative. They are. Uh, my 60-day challenge is that's for the kids. My, my, we kind of talked about it. Uh, because if I can get you to find a positive connection within the first 60 days, you're probably not going to wind up in a pit. Uh, find it somewhere else, anywhere else. But then keep at it. If I've been successful in, in, uh, in anything, yeah, that's nice, but it's not like McDonald's. You can't shelve it then, right? Not that I'm knocking McDonald's here, folks, but I'm just saying we're living in this drive through instantaneous society. Well, I've done that. I can check that off the box. No. Just because I tied my shoes for the first 48 out of half years of my life, every time I go out of the house, I still have to tie my shoes. Mm -hmm. So keep managing for success. So the question I have is yep. with the 60-day challenge, yep. when, at what point is this presented? For instance, new year, new school year, yep. grade 9? Yep, that's what I try to do. Okay. So this is my second year in high schools. So first year I didn't do this. I was trying to learn to roll a bit. This is something I came up with this year. Okay. Um, and my, my idea, not that we always successfully walk it, but my idea is to get into all my grade 9 classes okay. within the first 60 days of, of the, the school year mm -hmm. and present this to them. Because okay. I'm, what I'm ultimately, again, trying to do is if I can keep all my grade 9 kids out of the pit, then eventually my pits will get small. Right. And it's the pit kids that, that have the issue. Yeah, yeah. Why are the pits allowed to be there? Well, because, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, most of Mm -hmm. So you, have, you play a bit of a political game. First of all, you have to recognize currently that no matter what you do or say, there, there is a percentage of them that are going to go smoke somewhere. So if we don't allow them to smoke in this one little section, then do they wander off into the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. If they wander off into the neighborhood, do I have Grandma Smith and Baby Jane complaining, as an example? Where do they put the litter? Because they'll just go and toss the butts. Well, if they toss them over there on the sidewalk, people complain. If they toss them on the smoking pit that's on school property in this one select area, then it's at least it's our mess. So I'm not, I'm not justifying it from the point that I'm saying I agree with it, but I'm also a realist. I'm saying there are certain kids that are going to go and smoke cigarettes anyway. So how do we best mitigate that or manage that? It's also time, it's also time constraint. The government is not gonna, is not gonna give a, uh, money to staff the smoking pit. So you have to somehow, and then what's the bigger battle? Is it a bigger battle with the community or the town or the city because you have a bigger mess? Or is it a bigger battle just? And then if you can take these pit kids and you can, you can utilize a little bit of leeway to say, well, we let you do this, then maybe they will do this for you. Don't go do that because otherwise we always have the ability to kick you out of here. Now, Catholic schools, generally speaking, are, are better from what I've found of saying get off the property. Holy Trinity, which is one of my schools, where do they go? They go right in behind the River Oaks Rec Center. So now the river, town of Oakville and I have a bit of a management issue, if you will. So I work with the kids back there and I kind of try to keep tabs on them. But at least it's off school property. So that's great, but the problem doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. it just becomes someone else's problem to manage. Right. right? So again, I'm not, I'm, I would, you know what, again, this is another chapter in our book. When we come up with a way that there's no cigarettes being smoked, that's awesome. Everybody will be healthier. I don't know how to do that yet. Yes? No, she says I live in Loyola, and I'm right in the court behind it. It's, yeah. It's actually gotten a lot cleaner. Good. In the last couple of years, although I think I've got your drug dealers on my bridge the other day. Oh, your bridge there, yeah. That'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Them, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there's pros and cons each way. But I'm I'm glad it's getting better. Hopefully yeah. that's because. There, yeah. Good. How long have you been there? Uh, Ten years. Okay. So there'll be a little part of me that I want to go back to the office and I want to say to the other two guys I work with, Yeah, we're doing great, man. This is what I heard from this one young lady <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, be careful, by the way, when you do these cleanups because... Hello, everyone. I'd like to announce work session number one is complete. Workshop sessions number two will begin at 11.35. Thank you. So we'll rip through this really quick. Um, 
you guys have been great and thanks for all the questions. Be careful when you guys do do uh, cleanups because I know where, where there are some inject injection sites for my three schools. I don't know as well for the other guys' schools. They would, but and you can you can check with uh, uh, Bathel's the last name of the guy. Um, that he may know where they are around Loyola. I just don't spend enough time at Loyola because I'm too busy between Iroquois Ridge, White Oaks, and Holy Trinity. But I know where those kids go to shoot up. <laughs> um, everybody wants to make the NHL. Very few people will. Uh, this is, again, just my idea, adapt and overcome for the kids. Like, it's kind of a bit of a resiliency thing. Um, uh, and they need to believe themselves. So there are going to be positive solutions in the end. Uh, and th again, for the smoking pit, like, why are you here? What, what benefit are you gaining from here? You're, eventually, you're going to be an old grumpy guy like me at 48, and, and you need to be happy with where you are. Right? So a bit of a return on that investment. Um, and develop courage and compassion, I think, is, is... If you can get kids to do that, then, then I think there's a benefit to that, too. And we've kind of talked as, as, we've, as we've gone along, but um, if you guys want to email me about anything, you go ahead. Uh, 2244 is the extension to our office number in Oakville. Burlington would have its own high school liaison unit as well as up north, there's two guys that work there. Um, but you're more than welcome to, to email me or phone us in the office. Okay? Is there one officer assigned to a group of schools? Let's say Burlington. There's three high school officers that work in Burlington. Okay. I don't know which ones work in which schools only because I don't work in Burlington. Uh, Paul Proto, Mike Corda, and Frank Trasmundi are the three guys that work in uh, Burlington. If you phone the Burlington front desk, um, then they would be able to put you through to that office because I don't know what that office extension is. Or your school would know. Or your school would know. Yeah, great point. Yeah, uh, that's probably even easier. Yeah, just ask at your high school. They should know. Okay? Thank you, ladies. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You'll send it through. If you want it. Here. 